Action. Uh, just using uh, some, I'm, I'm actually, I've got an old door here, let me go show the door. Got an old door, that's from the, uh, the 1910s to 1920s. And a lot of people paint these, but what I'm gonna do is show you how to repair them. So I've got a bodge there and a bodge here, and a couple of bodges at the top, so I'm gonna show you how to repair them. So I'm using PVA, that's PVA, and I've done some sanding on the edges. What I've done is I've taken off the edges of the door after it's been stripped. And then what I'm doing is using the sawdust to make some filler. So if you buy filler in the store, it's gonna be the wrong color every single time. So I've got some shavings here that have come off the sander, put them in the filler, and then what I do is mix it up so it goes into a nice gooey, horrible little clump. And this is restoring doors. Now it's only good enough for small holes. It's not good enough for, you know, if you've got a hole in the door, you can't use this, but the little nail holes, it's absolutely perfect. And because the sawdust came off the door, it's the same colour as the wood. So there's no little dots you see. So what we do, we've got a screwdriver and flat point screwdriver and a scraper. That's all I'm going to use. And the fingers, of course, because this, this is actually delicate work. So let's get some, some filler. I'm just going to fill this bodgy keyhole. Now, there's nothing wrong with a keyhole shape in an old door, so what I'm going to do is fill it so it's proud and I'll let it sit proud. I don't want too much on them, I don't let it sit proud. Fill in all the little bumps. And what we can do is get, we can get a Keyshon, or a, is it called a Keyshon? Gutshon, Keyshon, Gutshon. Alex, what's it called? I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, it's called one of them. And, you can, and the brass one, and you can put it straight on top of there so it even hides it even more. So that is using wood filler. Now, I'm just gonna, I'm just dabbing it so that one, it evens out a little bit, it's dead flat. Plus, I've got little ridges in it, so the sander, which is the DA, which is this thing, that's a 40 grit paper, and that will catch on the ridges, so it'll take it off quicker and more evenly if I've got little lines in it, as little keys. So I know I've got a nice flat surface. And that's the same colour as the thing. And I've got two holes up here, so I'm going to put two holes in there. Now this one, these are more delicate, so I'm using my finger for these. I'm not too worried about them getting having as been accurate as that because I can just do that with a sander. I'll pick it up anyway. So what I've done here, let's see if there's any more. I've got one nail hole here, so I'll fill that. That's a net that holds the actual. These hold the the piece on, which you don't see after after a hundred years. You don't see them because they're covered in paint, like twenty layers of paint, but they are there because these uh, architrave things are nailed on. So what I'm doing now is I'm just looking around the door so you don't see any holes. I've got one nail up. I'll just fill these holes up. It's more to get the colour. I'm not too bothered about a little bump in the door. It's more to get the colour right. And so overall, we'll have a door that's right. So I'm gonna take all of that out because I don't like that filler in there. That's wood filler or something. I'm gonna take that out. Have I done the back? Yeah, I've done the back. So what I've done is look for all of the holes in the door. I'll take this off with the sand out. I've done the front and the back here, so I'll show you the, the front. So I've done the front and there was drip lines. There's still one there, I've got to take that out a little bit. There was drip lines down here, drip lines there. And this is the varnish when someone's varnished the door in the, in the past, I don't know, 50 years. I might just, I might leave that in, that's character, that's gorgeous. That. So you wouldn't fill that because it's part of the wood grain, it's where the, the tree grew. So this came from quite a big tree, because you can see the lines are quite far apart. So that's, a, that's an old tree, so I'm gonna leave that there, so that's part of the, the tree. So there's no point filling, that's character, but these aren't, nail holes aren't character. Now that, what I'd do with this, is I'd get an arbor, drill that out, and drill it out to the right size, right through the door, <clears throat> and then what we do is we get another piece of wood, and we put it into them, we use a Japanese um, it's a Japanese pull saw, it's a straight saw with a straight handle on and we just saw the piece of wood level with the, the door and that leaves the circle in there. Now it won't be the same colour, it'll be a different piece of wood but you don't try and disguise it, you make it obvious it's a different piece of wood and that gives it more character because someone knows it's had a handle on there in a different, you know, at some point in the future but now we've got these, these ones on. 
So there's nothing wrong with having character in the, in the wood, as long as it's wood. This stuff looks absolutely, I mean, this is horrible, isn't it? So restorers, what they do, this has been dipped and stripped. So this is the naked wood, and uh, this is a pine door, it's discoloured over the years, and it's been chemically stripped, so it's lost all its colour in it, all its pine colour. Um, but when you put dark wax on this, that will look like an old boy's whiskey drink in the library room door. It will look fantastic, doesn't it? So that's the door, that's the filler. Cheap as chips, it's using the stuff you've already got in your, in your bag probably. Um, my name's Mark, speak to you soon.